I hope your day is full of pineapples and coconuts and blueberries and raspberries and lychee and mangoes and kiwis and bananas, coconuts, did I say coconuts? All of the fruits you can get your hands on, guys. It's a fruitful Wednesday. We have a hot new pod for you with the one, the only Josh Potter. But before we get into this week's episode, there's just one thing I want to tell you about, and that's oh yeah, socks. Oh yeah. Look down at your feet right now. If you're not wearing socks, you ask yourself why. Uh, oh yeah, socks is an amazing company. They they collaborate with different artists to bring unique sock designs. I just got one of my favorite pairs ever. Um, it's like a take on the Morton Salt Girl, and it says don't be a salty bitch on the socks, and they're so cute, and you can chop all Oh Yeah Socks discount code SARAH10. They have different socks for skate, for snow, for boys, for girls. They have slippers. They collaborate with different companies. They got Mr. Rogers Socks. They got Bob Ross Socks. Whatever you're into, there's definitely a sock for you. They have yin yang socks I saw, cat socks. Guys, support the podcast, get some socks, cover those delicate feet. If Don't just be exposing your toes in 2022 for free, honey. Those are a, those are a form of currency in this, in this uh, financial climate. So cover them up while supporting the show. Cover your toes, support your favorite show, shop discount code SARA10, S-A-R-A-10, and uh, yeah, you guys, make sure to subscribe, rate, and review this podcast. If you're liking this podcast, I cannot tell you how much I really, really, truly appreciate the reviews. That's how people find out about the show. Uh, New episodes come out every Wednesday. I also have a new podcast with the one, the only Kimberly Congdon called This Bitch. That comes out every Monday. So two pods for you every week for free. So tell your friends about them. And let's get into this week's episode of Shank with the one, the only Josh Potter. Everyone, here it is. Pop up is a flag. <laughs> Guys, we're back. We're back here with a new episode of Shank with the one, the only Josh Potter. Fresh from the airport, Josh Fresh Potter. Fresh from the airport. How are you feeling? Um, I picked you up. I picked that was very nice of you. Thank you. I've never been picked from the airport before. You're so welcome, but I picked you up from the wrong spot. At first, you did you went? It was uh, this is a dilemma in Grand Theft Auto as well. Sometimes when I go to the airport in Grand Theft Auto, I'm driving there, I always end up upstairs instead of downstairs. No, yeah, is it modeled after LAX? It's very cl- like it's uh, it's called Los Santos. That's the city you're in okay. when you're in Grand Theft Auto. So they have things that look like LA. Like you can go to the, you can actually go to the comedy store. I've I've done that with Red Band before. Actually. Yeah. And so the airport looks just like LAX in terms of the upstairs down like the horseshoe shape and everything. Yeah, it's a fucking shit show. LAX. It's it hasn't been bad actually. Like getting there on Friday, there was no traffic and then I feel like you went even though you were upstairs, you left upstairs and came downstairs pretty quickly. Okay. There wouldn't seem to be a very much traffic, did okay. you think? In my head, it yeah. was all very chaotic. Well, yeah, the drive driving here, I'm so I haven't driven a car in four years. I feel like an old bitch. An old bitch. But I but it terrifies me now. Yeah, no. The idea of driving. The it's just it's just a lot of things to pay attention to. I can't even imagine getting behind the wheel of a car now, and I did it for a majority of my life. But even just the idea I would get like an anxiety attack if you were like even just to Pull, o- pull down the street or something like that. Yeah, I mean... My license just expired, too, on my birthday. So it's like, oh, now I really can't drive. <laughs> like, it's kind of just setting in. Yeah, no, that checks out. Yeah, but, it's crazy. But do you have a real ID yet? No, I have a <laughs> well, I have a, I have a passport, but I don't know what do I get as an ID. That's what I was thinking about too. There's like non-drivers IDs, right? Yeah, there's it's called a real ID. I don't know. They keep hyping up this fucking real ID. Well, everybody has to get a real ID to go to the airport. Now, 
That's a new You rule. can't just use your license. It's like when you used to have, you have to have one to go to Canada. You have to have one to go. They're basically making your state issued ID a fucking passport at this point. But this is us just keeping up with the rules and regulations. Well, we have to. Travel. We have to know because when you go, fucking, <laughs> when you give them your license at the airport now, it's like skadonk. Skadonk. Dude. Have you had that where you're like, it's my license. What do you want me to tell you? Wait, wait, wait. When I was in fucking Humboldt about to fly home, right before I'm about to go through TSA, bitch next to me looks at me and goes, how do I fly home with weed? I'm like, I don't know. Oh, don't, I do know. I'd go, also, well, where this... is it on you right now? I would have gotten real into it. You would have? Yeah, I would have been like, well, where do you have it at this moment? <laughs> How close she are you to the front? She was giving me anxiety because we were in line for TSA. And I'm like, this is not my problem, bitch. This is your problem. That's so funny. And I'm definitely high on edibles. And I can't be taking this on right now. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. Don't make this my problem. It's like I do such a packing regimen to fly with weed. Like I fly with weed willy nilly like it's not even enough like if i got caught it would just be an inconvenience for all of us really at the end of the day it wouldn't right. even be like i wouldn't face many penalties it'd be like don't you do that or whatever it's so little weed but it's like i have such a packing ritual because of the weed that like sometimes i'm happy that i smoke it all when i'm there so i don't have to ever that i don't have to come back with it. it's just freedom at that point then i'm just like throwing everything in there i don't even care what's in my bag at that point See, I'm just on this new idea of like, maybe if there's not legal weed, I shouldn't even fucking travel there. <laughs> like where? I don't know. I don't even know where it's not legal anymore. I don't know. Although I was Is just it in legal Milwaukee. in Chicago? I don't know. I'm, <laughs> I, I, I have flown with weed not... before it was legal anywhere, let alone, well, it was only legal in California in the beginning. And I used to fly with weed like I was flying with underwear. What about, what's the weirdest drug you've been on at the airport? I don't, uh, I like doing things that make me... Sedated? Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, I guess the weirdest one would have to be NyQuil, then. NyQuil? Yeah, because when I was a kid and we'd fly, I didn't do it, obviously, as often as I did now, and I was a little more scared of it. Like, the idea of it... I remember going NyQuil on... NyQuil is definitely a fucking hard drug. So, like, when I used to go on a plane, I used to clinch the... I should put my hand in the frame. I used to clinch the rest the entire time because it was like the feeling of being in the air and not coming back down and like feeling the ground beneath me Yeah, made me tense. I'd be like, we're in the air. Like the whole time I would be like <laughs> holding my breath. Like we were I can gonna... be like that too. It's not an enjoyable experience for me personally flying. I don't love it. Well, I've learned since then. Well, then I was, so I did that and I would be like, I can't, I would just be freaking out. So... In order to get past that, I would drink like half a bottle of NyQuil to the point where like my parents would be carrying me onto the plane. <laughs> I don't even know if they'd let me on in that state now, but it would be, I would just be wildly sedated. And now I still fly with like Xanax or whatever, but not because I'm nervous about the flying part. It's to handle the uh, deluge of humanity that you have to encounter when you fly every time. <laughs> <laughs> and just idiots that don't know how to fly. And I get it. Not everyone flies as often as we do for comedy and stuff like that. But Jesus Christ, people are. I mean, there should be. You should have to take a course to buy a plane ticket, I feel like. I, yes. I feel like they should give you, a, for sure, you should have to pass a test, an annual test. Almost even like an etiquette test, too. You know, just like oh. flying etiquette. Like if you acted out of pocket on a golf course, even a public one. You know, the greensmen or whatever, the people that would run the course, they'd come over and they'd reprimand you. Maybe you even could get banned from that golf course. I guess you can get banned from a plane if you, like, punch a flight attendant. But there, but if you're putting your overhead bag in the early compartments and then walking to the back of the plane and just acting like this is a free-for-all, you are gone. That should be an offense. So that is for sure an offense. That's if one you strike. stand up the second the fucking seatbelt light goes off and there's no reason for you to be standing up and all you're doing is clogging things up, gone. Oh. <laughs> if you don't know how to do the fucking carry-on security thing and you're fumbling, you're like, my jacket's still on. You got shit in your pockets. You're going back and forth. You know, you got one shoe on, one shoe <laughs> off. If you can't figure that process out, you don't get to gum. 
I I'm, I like this. I like yeah. the direction you're going with this. Um, what about the person who uses your armrest? Oh my god! And then also just spatial awareness in general. Dude, like, know where your body I starts. And I ends. feel I start. You know these. Airplanes are a real practice in empathy. I feel like this is very Buddhist of me where I try to like <laughs> the person in my I'm um, I'm a window seat pure purely guy. I don't know about you. Like if okay. I'm not in a window seat, something went wrong. I like an aisle. Hate an aisle. I love an aisle because I'm a peer. I need to have access to the bathroom. That's the difference between us. See, I that's good though that you acknowledge you're a peer and you take the aisle because <laughs> yes, and there are make some everyone peers else suffer. Yes. Yes. And I am too used to having a peer be in the window when I have an aisle, and I refuse when I sit in that chair. <laughs> no. I'm when I no matter how long this flight is, when unless it's like a overseas, you know, if I sit in that chair. I'm not getting up. Don't ask me if I want a ginger ale. Dude, you're the worst person to have to sit next to on a flight to like Brussels. I'm like, <laughs> I have to well, yeah. piss like 25 times. No, I would get a window seat and you would be get like, is aisle. this guy alive? Because <laughs> I just go into a ball. I have like, now you have masks. So I just fucking cover my entire face and the flight attendant doesn't bother you. If you have an aisle too, it's like, do you want anything to drink? And then she's like, she's opening cans in your face. She's passing them over. She's spilling Diet Coke on you as you hit a turbulence. Fuck that. That's too much chaos. Put me in a corner and I'll sleep until we, you know what I let my, my goal is? My goal is to like sit down, buckle in, and then just like hopefully fall asleep as they were like taxiing around or whatever. And then I pass out. And then all of a sudden what wakes me up is the, <laughs> of the wheels touching the ground. Yeah, that's that's goals. That's every time. always goals, but that yeah. never happens for me. Personally. Well, you're in the aisle. How could it possibly? You got fucking. <laughs> don't uh, aisle shame me. Don't <laughs> don't seat shame me. Yeah, you got a, you got people going back and forth. The line to the bathrooms nine fucking people deep because people people. Also, these if you're on a domestic flight and you're walking around during it, like you can't possibly sit still. Listen, if you have a medical condition where it's like. You're, you know, you need Ritalin or whatever the hell, then I understand. But, like, I don't know. These people getting up, walking around, they're, like, talking to their friends. I'm like, what are you doing here? <laughs> yeah. Go what sit are down, we doing you fucking here? loon. Yeah, also the people that bring, like, I don't like it when someone brings, like, an at-home meal. Now Meals all of a sudden, are, yeah. <laughs> don't involve oh. me in your homemade fucking meal. Well, this is, like, I was, on a, I was on a plane from chicago till milwaukee this flight they could have thrown us there i mean this flight was 20 minutes we literally took off and they were like please put your tray tables up i'm like we just got in here <laughs> yeah. it was 20 minutes yeah. and uh someone was like will there be drinks or you need a so you need a free soda <laughs> god damn people some people are just like i need the free the only time and if i'm in first class that's when i go like i'll have the meal you know what i mean because it's like totally different i can't believe and it's that, totally different it's so different to the point where they trust you with actual cutlery yeah like they give you <laughs> a fork and an, like a real fork and a real knife dude the class system is alive and well at the airlines yeah they're that's like, those dirty up. terrorists can't afford first class tickets. Here's a knife, man. That's fucked up. Cut up your steak, bro. Back there, they're like, you want, uh, you know, circus peanuts? Like, what are the things <laughs> people back in the fucking... Circus peanuts? I don't know. Here's some... I can't even... Circus penis... Penis. I said circus <laughs> penis. Circus penis. I don't know what that is, but it sounds like it would be chaotic as fuck. I'm surprised you never like hooked up at one point with like a carny or like a circus man. No, I um I did date this guy and as a gift I took him to see this circus. As a gift for him. Cir for him. <laughs> what did did he appreciate this? I gift? don't know. This do, was just Do you... they ever Josh, Well, I do mean, they ever If we're coming, no. <laughs> let's are we putting them all in the same class as circus? If you took me to a circus, I don't not sure if I'm appreciating it either. <laughs> Uh, you know? No, it was called Cirque Berserk. Okay. What is that? Is it that was like, like a Soleil? Burning Man's type circus. Oh, and God. I mean, hold on, hold on. Is this it's his like, aesthetic? Did he like this kind of vibe? Or? I don't know. But that's the closest I've gotten to fucking a circus performer. 
is taking a lover. That's not Cirque, but ba- Cirque Berserk sounds Cirque, like it's like a should juggalo. Should I Google it? It's like I I kind of should I Google this Cirque is what I Berserk? I don't remember what it was. I just remember the name. Lots Cirque of stunts, Berserk. Su- lots of stunts with flames. They're on like dirt bikes going through a flaming uh, gyro or some shit. <laughs> it says. It says. That's what I'm imagining. Um, Cirque Berserk. Oh, hold on. It looks like Mad Max. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. That's, I mean, like, I don't know. Like, at the time, like it seemed like a fun idea. Juggalo Cirque du Soleil. So you took him on a date to this. Yeah, that, that's the closest I've been to fucking any member of That's circuit. adorable that you tried. You were, like, really, like, you're like, I want to get him something really great. I know. And then we're I'm going to think about gonna... it. So this is so thoughtful. This and then it's like, so if it were thoughtful. my, if, if, it, if you were my girlfriend and you did that, I'd be like, oh, my God. It's so. No. Okay. I feel okay. so bad that she th- took so much effort to, like. <laughs> Plan this do something horrible that I thing. <laughs> could not care less about. No, okay. I'd be like, oh god. You want to know one of the worst, worst At dates that point, I ever it would planned? Be a gift to you that I would just be acting like this is great. Wait, babe. I gotta tell you the worst <laughs> date I've ever planned. You've I, the fact that you uh, you're in a relationship this when you was, plan these. Right? These was this was like in a long term relationship okay, okay, from okay. a while. Ago. I was gonna say these aren't like third dates. No, like, I'm, I'm not like I'm not planning dates unless it's like we're looking at years, honey. Yeah, okay. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like, okay, I guess I could plan a date. Sure. In like the whole relationship time. So this was <laughs> yeah, like. Okay, yeah. <laughs> and so far, I mean, can we guess how many you've planned in your life? Do you know? Before how many begin? dates? Yeah. You got the Cirque du Berserk. Cirque Berserk. How many dates? Like, let's say. The Dining t- Cube. Ten? The Dining Cube is what I'm going to tell you. Well, so like we're talking a handful in your life of dates you've planned. A handful. Not like hundreds. No. Not even probably a dozen. Maybe like 10. Okay. So out of in your entire lifetime, out of 10, we've got the Cirque Berserk. We got <laughs> that one. So let's go down to nine and see what this one's about and see how good we nine, are at batting average. And nine, let's see. nine is bad. Okay. This one I, I is the only one I can think of now. This is the it's cube, the dining the cube. The dining cube. So I was like <laughs> in my mid 20s, I'm like stoned, I'm like trying to look for like weekend activities of things to do in LA. Yeah. And they're like And what did you use what resource to LA Weekly? I'm I'm on the you know, I'm on the sites. Okay. I'm like working as an assistant and doing stand up so I don't really have that much free time, so I'm trying to plan dates when I can. So I can see my boyfriend, okay? Yes. So I'm like stoned. I'm like, okay, what's this? It says dining at the cube. And it's like, come experience dining like no other. This pop-up like cube. Where- pop-up is a flag. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> pop-up is the worst. I learned that in LA. Pop-up. Pop-up is not a good word. <laughs> no, pop-up is never a good word. It's like this pop-up dining experience. So we go to like this warehouse downtown. There's like four walls that are all like white projector screens. Mm -hmm. And they just play. Yeah. And they just play like this video. They just play a video. (laughs) On all the walls. On all the walls. What's the video? It's just like, like random. um, Like space. Abstract. Like supernova. It'll be like, (laughs) yeah, it'll be like, yes, it's kind of like doing supernova. (laughs) It's like that. But it's on all the walls. Okay. It's on all the walls. And then you're kind of cool. So you're like eating in like this cube. And then they have, by the way, every restaurant's a cube. (laughs) That's a good point. (laughs) And then they had this, this performer and the performer came out and he was like, I'm going to read some poetry. And then it was like the worst, most terrible well, that's thing ever. Actress. It was like it was like the most pretentious, terrible. When I think about it, I feel embarrassed. Well, that's obnoxious, and I feel bad because probably coming up in comedy, at least in the first three years of my life, I have ruined dates because <laughs> we would do shows like we did this show. Uh, my buddy Dan ran it. It was in a restaurant called mode which was like this like not super high end but it was like a nice restaurant where you would take a girl for a date you know right and we would do thursday nights there and set up and there was every week people that didn't know comedy was happening just eating their dinner and then all of a sudden people are doing open mic jokes in this restaurant and like 
Yeah, and it would get crazy. I mean, obviously there would be better times than others, but there were definitely just occasions where the entire audience, sometimes, you know, would get people to come watch it. So people were like, oh, what's going on or whatever. Right. But there were tons of times where there's no one there to watch it. And we just began speaking to like the couples. couples on dates, like three or four, not even a lot of couples on dates, but just like three or four groups of people. And they'd be having conversations. We're like, hey, everyone, you guys ready for comedy? And they're like, what the fuck? And there's not enough people for them to continue their conversations and things because they will feel rude. So now they're just hostage hostages, you know? So that's what this reminds me of, this poet, poetry. Cue, it was man. like that. It was a hostage like situation where you were like. What was the food like? The food. There was lots of courses. There was lots of weird grains. Courses. Like Pharaoh. You know, like like they're mixing it up here. What's it's fair? cute. That's like a white, some rice that, that uh, white bitches like. They're like, let me get some Pharaoh with some butternut squash. It's like a grain. I had a jasmine rice recently. Ooh, not not great. I mean, I it was fine. It was <laughs> but the way you said it made me. It seemed like it would be great. That's why I picked it. I put it in one of those whatever bowls, you know. Yeah, pokies. Yeah, I love a pokey bowl. Yeah, you know, I'm really expanding my palate out here in uh, Los Angeles. Pokey bowls and uh, jasmine rice. Going to a bunch of pop ups. Yeah, pop ups. <laughs> no, I did learn that was. Did you do the Britney Spears pop up thing? No, I didn't do that. But I did this one. Oh, woman oh. talked me into taking her to that, and I I paid for the <laughs> the way that you said that. <laughs> she did. She was like, "Will you take me to the thing?" I'm like, "All right." How was it? The amount of money the tickets cost. I sincerely thought Britney was gonna be there. <laughs> yeah, I thought Britney was gonna be. I really thought we were going to a Britney Spears. I'm like, oh, a pop up Britney Spears concert. <laughs> how how dope! And I said that to my friend, and he goes. Britney Spears is in like jail in her house <laughs> in Vegas. Don't you like see the news? Yeah. <laughs> you know, it was like before COVID and I'm like, oh yeah, she is in Vegas, huh? I'm like, well, what the fuck am I going to? Like a cover band or something? <laughs> and I go inside and it's a bunch of places you can take selfies like where some shitty art student created like a set. No, I know. I know the videos. selfie museums. The selfie museums. If a woman wants to go on a date to the selfie museum... Never talk to her again. We are not. There's no. There's no. I made a boyfriend go. A one. I, no, you did. I not. made a boyfriend go with me to, to a selfie museum. To take headshots and called, stuff. Called. It was called like the Happiness Museum. Okay. And it was so bad. <laughs> Just so wing, happy, series of wings like, on a wall. A, here's the happiness museum where you come to be happy and because your life's so wonderful and you come take selfies in different setups it's like a gumball machine and then the next one would be like <laughs> like you slide down um a rainbow into a pot of gold and you can make it into a gif oh my and i God. was like making my boyfriend at the time do all of these fucking things around the happiness museum Listen. i'm like there's a bathtub come get in the bathtub with me we're gonna do this no like Terrible. Oh my god, this is my nightmare. I'm like, okay, this is what I don't understand. Like how museums used to be like you go and that's you experience art. Now in this fucked up technology, it's like we think we are the art. Oh my We're god, like, that is fucking wild. That's weird, right? Well, I don't like that they called it a museum because that's kind of what this Britney Spears thing was. It was like supposed to be like you're going through all of her music videos. You could take photos like <laughs> yeah. I'm at the Hit Me Baby One More Time locker. And it's all or, just like a gimmick to I'm like on the make toxic money. Plane yeah. Or whatever the fuck. And it's like I, I I'm on the toxic plane. <laughs> yeah. I you know, like I don't know. I like to have a good time. I Me love it. too. I'm a big you ask anybody out there, I'm a big fun I'm a big fun guy. You're a big fun guy, you love a pop up. Those things though, <laughs> I fucking become a real Grinch. I'm a real Scrooge at those because it reminds me of being a child and my mom being like, take the picture, take the like who wants to take pic like we're going to take pictures who wants to do that i certainly don't and i'm just for standing free. there in the corner you're going to take pictures for free i'm paying to take the i'm pictures. actually losing money to take pictures. yeah i paid a ticket i thought at least there would be like a britney spears cover band can we get some gay kid to go up there and sing britney spears at least <laughs> do you have any pictures at the pop-up at the britney pop-up please tell me you do i think they are very buried on my like 
phone somewhere. I would have to scroll. Please, I want I, you with like the snake around. Your no, no, no. Neck. I didn't do any. I didn't do any. I think I took like one. But here was the other thing that bugged the shit out okay, of me. Okay. Okay. There was a ball pit there, and the girl was like, there "Let's was go ba- with a ball pit." I'm like, <laughs> "Not a public ball pit." I go a ball pit. <laughs> I'm like, I am not going in a ball pit. She was like, come on. It's for me. It's for, f-. I go, it's for you. I'm not going in a ball pit. Like, who do you think, who do you think you are that you're getting me in a ball pit, lady? You have to be, you have to be the love of my fucking life to get me to go into a fucking ball pit at 35, now 36 yeah, years no. old. No, no. At the time, yeah. 35 years old. Like I think you could be arrested if you're in a ball pit after this the was age like of an adult. 12. <laughs> this was like an adult ball pit. I'm like, why? Why? What are we doing? Like, this is not. But I will say the selfie museum when I went, the happiness museum, we slid down a rainbow into a pot of gold, and the pot of ball gold pit. was a ball pit. Yeah, of course it was. They're all ball pits. Why do they have a ball pit at a selfie museum? I never, even as a kid, like ball pits. I don't think I, can, I don't like the feeling of it. It feels like you're in quicksand or something of balls. And my mom would always be like, kids piss in there. <laughs> yep. So then I'm walking around and like any little thing I feel, I'm like, it is gross in here. And also I was kids really scared animals. of AIDS needles popping up. <laughs> you're very much darker than my fear <laughs> of urine. But yes, no, that could be in there too. Something sharp. Something, but that's funny. Did your mom tell you about AIDS needles when no, you were going No, somebody told me about AIDS needles, and it scared me so much that I thought that there was AIDS needles everywhere, and like in the gas station things, and in like the public phone booths. Well, how would they affect you in a phone booth? Because they would like put them, you know, where the where the change comes out in that thing. Oh, that would be tough to a <laughs> syringe up in there. I thought in like fifth grade that that was happening. I don't know if that was just a rumor or what, but I was like scared of like gas pumps and all these things. I know they of- tell you to be weary of needles and stuff like that, but like it's so fun. Uh, maybe that was happening around here. I don't know. Were people being know, nefarious right? with the disposal of their needles? Usually they fall out of their arms onto I don't know. the I ground. I think it was like an obsessive fear. I think I had like one teacher mention it one time. I also had like, okay, do you ever think back on like the teachers that you had and how oh, yeah. and like wonder what the fuck was wrong with them? No, I mean, now that I know <laughs> what it takes to be, now that I have like some peers that I grew up with become teachers, I go, oh, that's not so hard. So yeah. who are these people? <laughs> who are these Who people? were these people? But then who? you look back, you're like, oh, I think I could have partied with that one and- yeah i probably could have slept with that one (laughs) um but my mom was really the one that like like i never would go into a ball pit i never even like the needles thing like my mom was always big on like making things sound so ominous same that i wouldn't go like i would make the choice she she never was like you're not allowed to go in the ball pit she would just tell me about a ball pit and what could be going on in there (laughs) And I would make my own decision. I never like, want to go in one. That's like what my mom would do too. But my mom would plant seeds. She'd be like, when lice was going around school, she'd be like, don't touch anything. If you touch something, you could get lice. And if you get lice, I'm going to have to wash your hair in spe- like this special shampoo. And it's going to be really itchy and really gross. And you're not going to be able to do anything. So I'd be like terrified. And she'd braid my hair like. She'd pull it back so far. Like oh, my I God. So she was checking <laughs> for it all the time? She was always obsessively checking for lice. And Did I you never have had it. outbreaks? No, I never had it. I just heard a thing recently that said lice means your hair is actually clean. I don't know about this. I don't know. I heard, literally <laughs> heard it in passing. Can't even <laughs> recall where I heard it from. <laughs> I did that the other day on a podcast. I just said something. I'm like, I think Tom Brady had more rushing yards this season than his entire career. And then I made the person like, like fact check it. They spent so much time. They go, no, you're not even close. Like, sorry, we wasted 15 minutes. You're like, sorry, I'm a That was comic? on my Patreon, folks. <laughs> People oh, yeah, paid for Patreon. that. I edited it. Don't worry. But no, it's, uh, yeah, I do. Uh, it's Hell been yeah. fun. Come on by if you like that kind of thing. What are you doing on there on that page? So far, we've talked a lot about football because it just started this weekend, and that was really encompassing my entire weekend. So should we? Should we talk about it? Show at the same time. That was my Vietnam doing that show during my football game, but you know, Uh, everyone was concerned. People uh, yesterday were like, "First world problems, right?" Has anyone people people talked? People said that (laughs) at, at the show. Stickler was like, has anybody checked in with Potter? 
And then Annie's like, yeah, I was with him this weekend. And I was like, yeah, I'm picking him up from the airport tomorrow. <laughs> and, was Annie, like, did Annie go, why is he still in Milwaukee? <laughs> I don't think she knew oh. my flight changed because like she left on Sunday and then I was supposed to leave Monday morning. And, you know, through all of the hullabaloo, I drank about 15 beers at, right. at like eight on stage when I was on stage for like almost three hours. And um, then, you know, afterwards I drank a bunch to the point where like I had such a fun time on stage and the meet and greet was fun that like the loss was just like it happened. But then it sat in and yes, I overslept on a little bit by just a little bit to the point where it was going to suck to try and get to the airport. <clears throat> and then my plane got canceled and then the second plane got canceled. So I guess I'm just sleeping in Milwaukee another night. So I just chilled in that hotel room and got like chipotle and fucking did some emails i don't know <laughs> just, but that, but it was also, relaxing it was kind of nice i enjoyed yeah, it but when also you get you stuck know. somewhere is, it's weird well let's talk about how well then all your I would've... card and the maid oh well all possibly I shopping I don't know. that's true i go well here's the thing i all i um did was i didn't leave the room so my debit card i left it in the, in, the, in the hotel room then he has a charge from Sheen.com, S-H-E-I-N. Yeah, I go, well, do you know what this is? I thought it was just like a... Like some weird website. I thought it was like porn, and I go, oh, of course I spent $300. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> <gasps> that one, at least I'd investigate. But this, I go, what is this? You're like, it's clothes. I go... I'm like, I know exactly what that is. That's fast fashion from China. You think you're getting a good deal. It comes, it's like tissue paper that like degrade, that like falls apart in a day and it's like the sizes are all weird that's what yeah China the sizes too, yeah. are all fucking weird i know i was fucking around with some chinese uh clothes for a little while you were yeah when i was poor and i uh poverty. i thought it looked cool you know <laughs> yeah poverty i was like i'll have you fucking around with some chinese clothes yeah i'm like what's a couple of i mean these kids need to work over there so let's let's have them make some clothes you know <laughs> <laughs> Um, but like, did you have any teachers that like smelled weird or wore weird things? Like, oh yeah, plenty. There was a music teacher. I can't. I think her name was Mrs. Jones. Okay, okay, okay. I'm gonna tell you about my music teacher next. And she was like my first ever music teacher. She was the elementary school music teacher, and she just had like, she was where I learned like what coffee smelled like because she just like basically bathed in it. It seemed like you know. <laughs> It was like old coffee all the time <laughs> like old and cigarettes too. Like she smelled like coffee and cigarettes. And I was like, now I look back and I go, that's me. That's that smell like me now. It'd be real familiar. But back then it was a foreign smell, you know, in elementary school. Oh, it's almost intrusive. Yeah, it was very, it was very <laughs> unique and interesting. I'll tell you that. <laughs> Every other room smelled like crayons, and, you know, like whatever. You know what smell from school really fucked with me? And it what? still does. And I kind of have a thing with it. The smell of like, dry maple syrup like maple syrup like you know what i mean like on the days they'd serve breakfast like that kind of like generic S shitty school maple syrup yeah the smell of that in the air has made me vomit many a time. i don't like i don't love a syrup i'm not maybe i don't like pancake i don't eat pancakes because I, eat I can't do maple syrup i'll do pancakes no syrup maple syrup is the worst smell on the history of the earth i <laughs> That's a, a hot pol take. I that know. is a hot and very polarizing take. I had this one teacher who would wear different types of animal print always. Always like cat prints though. Like it would be like a leopard and a tiger or like a boy teacher? A female teacher. Oh, okay. Mrs. Hugley. She would always wear these com this combination of cheetahs, like mix match cheetah. But cheetah. everything would be cheetah. Was it like sexy cheetah or was it like children y cheetah? You know what I'm it saying? was There's like kind of like sexy cheetah, like stripper cheetah, kind of. But she would like layer it on so that it would be like not sexy. So she'd have like a oh. windbreaker on that was like leopard print, and then underneath that there'd be like a t-shirt that was leopard. Print. Was it matching or was it? It was all chaotic. It oh was god, just like that's, a, that's any too much. type of leopard print. And then she had this ring on her finger that was like really big and silver, and it would open. And she said it was her poison ring. She said if we if we got a, a grammatical error or something wrong, she'd come over and poison us with her poison ring. Oh, uh, that's abuse. <laughs> <laughs> I 
And like, she used to say crazy shit. She used to scare us so much. And she'd give us like really weird assignments. She'd be like, well, you need to learn how to spell everyone's in the class's names first and last. And like, it's like scarred in my head. Like I can like, sometimes I'll can be you like, still do it? I can spell this guy Tchaikovsky. C-Z-A-J-K-O-W-S-K-Y-J. Oh, wow, that's like you can do the whole phone book in Buffalo if you know how to do that. <laughs> that Polish there. Oh, my God. But I'm like, what What was that? Like, when I think about some of the teachers I had and I look back, I'm like, that seems, that seems weird. And then it was weird. Like, I had this one teacher who was like the PE teacher slash environmental studies teacher. Oh, yeah, they had to. A- do mixed roles <laughs> i don't like that yeah i want one expert my gym teacher was my health teacher he was really cool though he was and he eventually got like fired because of cancel culture because he was like saying wild shit in health class you know <laughs> and he always would and he would like make f- he used to like make fun of this one kid not calling him gay but like basically calling him gay you know what i'm saying yeah, like yeah and it was like a popular kid like it wasn't like this kid was like some kid getting bullied this kid was like a bully right and he was making fun of him everyone thought it was hilarious and this kid was all like fuck you man or whatever. And no like, everyone thought it was hilarious though i thought he was the funniest teacher and then like years later after i was long gone i read i read it in an, uh, uh, an article or whatever about him getting fired because he was like saying inappropriate shit what i was you... like well that's whatever what do you think happens in the teachers lobbies i think they fuck you do? No, that'd be cool though, right? I want to make a euphoria about the teachers. <laughs> <laughs> Where they're all, I do all wanna shit. know. Remember what was that? Uh Drill Bit Taylor was that movie with uh, Owen Wilson and uh Judd Apatow's wife where they were like making out in the teachers lounge. Leslie Mann. Leslie Mann, yeah. Making out in the teachers lounge. Yeah. I feel like I like the idea of there just being like <laughs> it just being so chaotic in there and there being like bongs. And- I'd love that. Yeah. If they came in and they're like doing lines of ketamine, they're like, ah, fifth period's coming up here. Let's do a bump. Yeah. Like a green room. <laughs> yeah. It's like, like a, a green, green room. room. Yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. It is like a teacher's green room. The teacher's lounge is like a teacher's green room. <gasps> Yeah. Oh my God, that's so funny. I was like, I think I'm gonna do a quick bump. We're gonna get into capital. Oh today. man, you want to have a beer at six period? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I could be drunk. What's that last clause? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Religion. Yeah. I could be drunk for religion. Uh, I got my special ed classes yeah. at the end. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it's so. It's also so crazy how much stuff you have to learn in school that you never use again. Well, it's it's like Is that a bad attitude to have? I mean, it's supposed to like train your brain and like who knows what sparks a child's interest in something. You know what I mean? Like just because we realized we weren't interested in that doesn't mean everyone was. Some of the things we were interested in, other kids were like, Why did I learn that horse shit? you know? Yeah, but like there is bitches. You have to learn a wide amount of things to be a educated person and then also to decide how you're going to contribute to society. Or not. <laughs> I guess you're right. It starts with an education. Yeah, it's just but a simple one. Just a, you got to get your brain basic, moving, you know? Just a basic education. I remember in high school, though, there was bitches taking ceramics. Yeah, no, there's du- there's those? so much dumb things, but it's, again, supposed to, like, supposed to spark your artistic uh, or creativity or whatever the fuck. There's supposed to be things that, like... Sparks fired? Sp- speak to those things, you know <laughs> i remember there was, i had like i had like a photoshop class that i took and i wish i like retained any of that but they've changed photoshop in the last 15 years i had a photoshop years. class too and i don't i barely even remember what we did in that. we did so many things like we had to make all these video everything that would have come in handy editing podcasts and shit today <laughs> like i learned in this class but just couldn't keep up with it throughout the whole thing. And everyone thought that was some bullshit class back then, I remember. Well, also learning something new as an adult is like a fun thing in some ways. I disagree. I you am disagree? an old dog. I don't I learned enough things. <laughs> you feel <laughs> No, I don't. Feel... I do like learning things, but I don't seek it out or I me like it either, but I need it I... forced upon me. I need it forced upon me too. Yeah, it's not fun like there are these people who, and I'll read books and shit, but it's usually about things I already 
know about and I want to learn more about. Mine are normally self-help books. So again, you something you know about but you want to learn more about yourself. Do you, can you ever really know yourself? I don't know. I don't care enough about myself to fucking want to learn more or <laughs> I'm just like trying to live with myself. Some days I'm yeah. like the the narrative that's happening upstairs is a little chaotic, if you know what I mean. And I'm like, let's just Trust me, I know. I'm like, there's a whole dialogue happening upstairs, baby. I have a bad dialogue up there that I'm going to learn how to fix, but it's that's all it is. It's not like and I'm not gonna read a book to fix it. I need some like person to go like, hey, you know what I mean? Like talk to one. A, a therapist? Lot. Yeah, one of those. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the only way. Because there's these... I'll read a self-help book or a something, and I'll just go, yeah, probably for some rube this works. <laughs> you know, like, I'll just second guess it every time. Like, and it probably is helpful, but I'm too, like... I love uh, a self-help book. Yeah, I just don't want to think about it as often. Yeah, I mean, I listened to one self-help book. I was like, this is a little too intense. Yeah, they're the... It's like... I also, then I start looking at who's the person who wrote it, and I go, well, like, I'm like, well, who's this person? Also, like, I bet How's your us, mar- Show me your marriage. One of us could easily write a self-help book. If we people were paid the right a, amount of money. It's a vertical that people are just writing books on left and right, and some of these people writing them, I go, have you finished your self-help? Because, <laughs> like, I don't even want to get to where... You, I mean, you got to catch up to me, bro. Yeah, you're <laughs> you going to have to write a self-help book called The Roach's Guide to Life. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a fucking picture book. <laughs> it's like, how to shotgun a beer. <laughs> oh, my God. I did like five on stage this week. I, haven't, I was real out of practice. Too. I don't know. I got through it. Oh, man. I got to get that video. Well, what else would be in your self-help book? Mm, what else would be in my... How to get laid how looking get like laid. this. Would be definitely in there. That's a chapter. Okay. I mean, it's not like, uh, that's probably, if I were to write any sort of self-help book, it would be trying to help incels realize it's not that hard, man. Like, chill out. All you got to do is just. Be cool. (laughs) Yeah, relax. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, don't, uh, because I was, I mean, I wasn't an incel, but I was frustrated with women and like, it took me a while to figure things out i didn't get laid until i was like 22 okay so like can we get you a book deal so you can write this book well maybe that'd be fun we'll if i got a book deal that's why i would have expired <laughs> otherwise i'm not giving out anything <gasps> yeah and yeah, then i'll start wearing mascara and feathers like that Mr. <laughs> guy. remember that guy that dildo who's like you know how you get laid you make fun of him Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He's like, you know, the peacocking thing. Yeah, he'd be like, nice shirt. Where'd you get that from my (laughs) tablecloth? (laughs) He'd be like... Negging is what it was called. Yeah, he'd be like... He would encourage people to... uh, Men to neg women, but then also to be like... Peacock, uh, yeah. Like, accentuate your best features so guys would be wearing like... A top hat. coats and like, yeah, like pork belly hats or whatever. That shit worked on me, unfortunately. Top I'm hats like, and shit. I'm like, yeah, that's a Western hat. Wow. Well, that's that why a- I'm surprised you have never dated like a guy at a circus, you know, with a handlebar <laughs> mustache and like a, a striped hat and everything, where he's like, "Welcome one, welcome <laughs> all." That kind of guy. That's what everyone. How many my magicians have you dated? Like? <laughs> I have at least two exes that look straight up like magicians. I'll show you. No, I mean I don't doubt it. <laughs> They have capes and shit. <gasps> How many cape boys cape. with capes have you dated? Oh, right Kasim now. wears one on Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah. But that's like for... Kasim? I'm saying, does Kasim wear the cape, though, to like Costco? No, but that would be so cool. <laughs> You'd be into that? I, I would I would love it if he wore his cape to Costco. <laughs> he would never do that. You got to get him to. I got to... I would love him you to wear tell his cape, him cape out cape and means. about. The cape, like... Gets you going. You got to be like, you got to wear that. You got to wear that cape. You're That's cape. my lingerie. So like, my like, kink is a cape. <laughs> you're, ca- yeah. you're just like, the cape is your thing. Like, <gasps> well, he got like this um, cloak from Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> so capes and <laughs> they, cloaks. They sent it to him. And it's like this huge snuggie. And like the hood is really, really like cloaky, wizardy looking. Covers and I wear head. it around oh you wear it i wear it around all the fucking time it's my favorite thing in his closet <laughs> the dungeons and dragons cloak but sometimes like in the middle of the night i'll go to the bathroom and i have like i look like a fucking grim reaper it's just like yeah music. that's great though 
Yeah, cloak life. C- cloaks and capes, baby. Cloaks and capes, baby. That's awesome. I am. Uh, I yeah, can never rock a cape. I want to do. If I were to do a cape, it would be like a old timey oil baron <laughs> kind of cape, and I'd have a cane. <gasps> a cape and a cane. Yeah, you'd have to. So you could move the cape away from you with it. Oh, uh, I like that. Yeah. I like I like that attitude. Now, what if there was a cape that was like Superman? Like, what do you mean? Like a six-year-old would wear like, like a, a super, flamboyant like, cape? Like a red Superman cape. No, the literal... <laughs> Like a little kid would wear. Uh, that doesn't do it for me. I yeah, need no. I need a dark cape. No, you need like Dracula. I need like a Dracula cape, yes. like a velvet cape. Like Cassim's is like a green velvet, I believe. I was like, and but he never brought up the cape to me. I found the cape on my own because like he was, was that traumatizing. Where you're like, I go, <sighs> you've been wearing a cape, and I don't even know anything about it. And the. That, and he's that like, made, yeah, I wasn't trying to like. It's like you're like, getting cheated on. I was like, yeah, I wasn't trying to like tell you that I wear a cape. And I was like, why? And he's like, it's kind of nerdy. I'm like, it's amazing. Yeah, you're like, <laughs> why wouldn't you tell me? Do you not want me soaking wet all the time? I mean, <gasps> Please tell me about the cape. The cape. Keep the, get the cape out. Put it in the A game. <gasps> wear it so to us. funny. <laughs> <laughs> so wear it to Vons. Dude, I matched. No. I found the guy who wrote the game on Raya. Wrote the game? Yeah, the guy who t- told people to peacock. Mr. E? Yes. He was on you Raya. You matched with him? He came up as an option. I swipe no. What does he look like now? Because that was like 20 years ago. Not actually. good. Is he still wearing mascara? Yeah, he's he's committed. He's committed to his persona. Let's just say what that. What were the other elements? It was negging and uh, peacocking and what else? Be rich. I think that was one of them. It was. Like... <laughs> Be rich. It was the opposite of all the things I could do to a woman to like get her to like me. I was like, this is like re- going to repel women. I remember I li- I watched that show and I was like, I'm going to do all the opposite things. Yeah, that's pretty much. I started much... dressing like a, tr- like a fucking truck driver. <laughs> but I, I, I. I was so nice to girls. I'm like, now I'm getting laid. <laughs> This I Mr. know. Mr. E guy blows. This they'd be like. I remember my college boyfriend said to me, "You have cute teeth, just like a little bunny." Just kidding. I I read that you should say that to uh, um call to nigger. I was like, <sighs> see, people aren't smart enough either to like do it. Yeah, no. Like I get what he was trying to say. It's like teaser, so you don't like feel like sh- so she doesn't have the like power anymore and like yeah but that's also it also doesn't work like that but always. also stupid idiots go like they don't know the difference it doesn't work like that i understand the sentiment though do you the know what sentiment, i'm saying Where it's like, i understand of like okay like like level the playing field right whatever right that's what if like take her off the pedestal right yes and but, because she'll get like dried up if she's like Ugh, this fucking hello Sam. my princess yeah like that kind Sam. of horse shit yeah. yeah so i get it but i also think like being nice pays off yeah for no, the most a, part like you can't a way be a to huge dick things. yeah exactly there's been some guys that are this one guy i matched with him and he said to me when's the last time you met a guy that you dated or that didn't involve a match of some sort on an app well, I knew Cassim before we matched on the app. Yeah, but you matched and that's what made you start dating. Yes. It's almost like the app had to verify it before you even consider it. Yeah, well, because during pandemic, I was heavy on the apps. Yeah, but even before, were you not doing the apps before? I was I was in a relationship a little bit before. Uh, and then I did the apps. The apps during the pandemic, I guess that would have been the time to do it. But it was dark. It was dark. It was like, well, everyone's trying to fuck. Everyone's trying to fuck. People's like marriages are disintegrating. Like there'd be like a new fresh crop of people out. I wish I was in my hometown because you would see people that you know. Yeah. On the apps around here. I won't know anybody, but you'd know you're like, huh? Yeah. I know that guy, that girl's boyfriend. (laughs) It was like, because I was on the apps for a while and then I got into relationships and then I was on the app again. And, um, and this is all Raya. 
Yeah, and I you don't even fuck with the troglodyte apps like I tried Hinge. I like Hinge. Tinder, you know, it's like the no, sewer. That's sewer I didn't people, do, yeah. I didn't do Tinder. Do you <laughs> yeah. do Tinder? I did do Tinder, but even for me, I'm like, this is just, what are we? <laughs> <You're> like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, how many, I got to like lose a few brain cells before I start talking to these trailer. I mean. <laughs> well, the people, the guys on Tinder that come up are gnarly. The girls that come up are all, and they're just like, when they type to you, it's like, you got, you know, like, it's, it's like, no. fuck it. It's nonsense. It's like yeah, contact like, with an alien life form. You're like, yeah. I don't even know how to have a conversation. I'm supposed to go on a you. date with this person. I don't even, like, culturally relate to them in any capacity. At all. Like, and I'm not a snob. I'm from poor people and trailer trash. But it's like, communicating-wise, it's like, are you even in the same city? It says you're two miles away from me, and you might as well be, uh, like, three worlds away. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Know? Or, like, you can just tell from the messages that right away it's not going to go anywhere. Yeah, that's <laughs> the problem with those things, though. You're like, okay, cool, I needed a validation, I got it, now I'm getting off the app. That's the problem with those things, though. It's like, I have no, other than it's like, would I want to fuck this girl? Probably, all right, sure. Then I swipe, and then it's like, you matched, and it's like, so I guess she wants to maybe fuck me too like yeah that's the premise yeah. i have going in <laughs> yeah because and then it's you're like, like cool. we haven't even talked to each other yeah. yeah so you're like this must be that right and then talking makes me go like oh god i can't possibly fuck this person you know <laughs> I mean? like, no talking's a big thing yeah i can't and i'm not good on text i'm like a phone call guy let's go hang let's get a drink guy i can't do texting the thought of though meeting a complete stranger out in public. Well, that's why you got to do it in a extreme public situation at a bar, like right. where there are a bazillion other people around. Right. And you don't get abducted. It's just like meet me there. I'll be sitting. I'll wave you down or whatever. We know what each other looks yeah. like. Yeah. But if you're in a public space, it's like. But also, so I remember like going on dates and like when you first get there and you're looking for the person that you're going to go on the date with yes. that moment. Oh, boy. Nothing worse. Well, while you're like looking. For imagine them. having these eyes trying to do that. I've walked through <laughs> restaurants. I've done laps. You've done many laps. Then I'll send a text and they'll be like, I'm not there yet. I'm like, oh, probably should ask that first. <laughs> That's our episode. Oh, okay. <laughs> so fun. Where can thanks people... for picking me up from the airport. Hell yeah. Thanks for coming on the show. No problem. Where can people find you? Uh, I am going to be in Pittsburgh at the Pittsburgh Improv. I'm going to be at Raleigh at the Raleigh Improv. Those are the 2nd and 3rd of February. And uh, you can find me on YouTube, the Josh Potter Show. And uh, that's about it. Yep. Hell yeah. I'm on Instagram and shit, but just... I'll link to it. I'm not shadow banned. You can find me. I'll link to it in the description of the episode so you can find all Potter stuff there. Thank you. Yes, and thank you guys so much for listening to another episode of Shank. New new episodes every Wednesday. Also, make sure to check out my new podcast with Kimberly Congdon called This Bitch. Um, New episodes of that every Monday. And for comedy dates, you can follow me at Princess Shank, Instagram, Twitter. Hit me up. If you're enjoying the podcast, leave a review. More comedy dates soon. Bye.